Hi, I'm Anna. And Lawrence Jackson and I would like to explain to you how the double slit experiment works when firing single electrons. The two slit experiment shows diffracted light waves interacting with each other to create an interference pattern. Look, you can see the white bands of light. But what is an interference pattern? Imagine the moving circles are ripples on the surface of a lake that were created when two pebbles were thrown into the water. As the ripples collide, peaks will meet peaks and increase in intensity. A trough meeting a peak will cancel each other, and a trough meeting a trough will decrease in intensity. The collisions create an interference pattern, creating bands of high-intensity ripples, which radiate outwards like spokes in a wheel. So, an interference pattern gets created when waves collide, and in the double-slit experiment, light must travel as waves because an interference pattern is created. Bands of high-intensity light, created by the interference pattern in the double-slit experiment can be seen as lines of light on the back screen. Light travels as waves, and when they encounter objects, they are either absorbed, diffracted, polarized, reflected, refracted, or scattered. In the double-slit experiment, monochromatic light is diffracted as it passes through narrow slits that are comparable to the wavelength of the light. Diffracted light waves spread out and become much broader than regular light waves. And, the diagram shows, a representation of diffracted light created by a single slit. When light is shone at both slits, we expect both slits to produce diffracted light waves. However, we still get this result when we fire individual electrons at just the right-hand slit. When we fire an individual electron at one slit, both of the slits create diffracted waves. How is this possible? We know that an electron is an elementary particle, not made up of smaller components. So, if an electron can't be split into smaller components, how does it enter both slits at the same time? An electron needs all of its energy to maintain itself as a particle, but we know the energy from a single electron can be divided into smaller parts when it's in waveform. This is seen when a molecule comprising three atoms absorbs an electron's energy, and the energy is split between the atoms. And, as light travels as waves, it would have been an electron wave that traveled through both of the slits simultaneously. In fact, if a single seed wave doesn't travel through both slits simultaneously, the interference pattern would lose its symmetry. The four interference patterns shown in the diagram are created where the origins of the diffracted waves were slightly out of time. We must have symmetrically diffracted waves that start from the same seed wave to get a symmetrical interference pattern. The conclusions of part 1 are that light travels as a wave. That not all of a light wave's energy can pass through a narrow slit that is comparable to the wavelength of the light that the energy from a single electron becomes a seed wave and passes through both slits simultaneously, which creates an identical pair of diffracted waves. That's the end of the first of three short videos explaining the double slit experiment, and we hope you enjoyed it. Our second video explains why a wave becomes a particle when observed. And our third video explains how quantum probability waves are realized as light patterns. We hope to see you there or at www.quantummindcontrol.com.